For this video, what I want to do is show you how to find a p-value for the given standardized test statistic and the tail of the test. Then we are going to make the decision as to whether we would reject or fail to reject the null hypothesis based on the given level of significance. Okay, so um, the first one that we are given is that z is negative 2.05. We have a left tail test and alpha is 0 0.05. So I always suggest drawing out a picture because most of the time when you're dealing with hypothesis tests, that's a requirement. And the negative 2.05 would just be the area that corresponds to a z-score of negative 2.05. Um, and since it says left tailed, that's why I shaded to the left. If it said right tailed, I would shade up to the right. Um, of that standardized test statistic. And then what we are going to do is after we find the area, the p-value is just the area to the left of this tail. Okay, so we're looking for the probability that z is less than negative 2.05. So you can do this either on a z table or normal table, or you can use technology to help you. So for this one, I am going to use the TI-84 to get this value. And then after we get this value, we're going to compare it to our alpha level. Okay, so let's grab our calculator. And what we're going to do is we're just going to go to second distributions, normal CDF, which is option two. The lower, anytime it's to the left, the lower limit is going to be negative 1 E99. And then we would plug in our z-score, which is negative 2.05. Make sure that you hit the negative button here and not the subtraction button, because if you hit subtraction, you're going to get an error. And then when you hit paste and enter, and for some of you, if you have an older calculator, you would just put it in exactly as this st states. You would just type in the negative one E99. The E can be found by doing second and the comma. It's this double E up here. Um, and then the comma in between can just be inserted with the comma here. So um, you would just make it look exactly like we typed in the normal CDF. And then you would type in the negative one E99 comma negative 2.0501. Okay, I always want to point that out because some of the graphing calculators are slightly different. All right, so what we got for this one was 0 0.0202. And then to make our decision, what we are going to do is we're going to compare P to alpha. Okay, so alpha or our p-value is 0 0.0202 and our alpha is 0 0.05. And so then we would look at this and if our p-value is less than or less than or equal to, um, then we are going to reject the null hypothesis. If it is greater than, then we will fail to reject. So for this one, we will reject the null hypothesis since 0 0.0202 is more extreme than 0 0.05. Okay, so remember our p-value is how likely we are to get the standardized test statistic if our null hypothesis were true. And so in this case, our p-value 0 0.0202 is more extreme than the 0 0.05. Okay. All right, so for the next one, we are given z equals 1.87, and it's a right tail test, and our alpha on this one is 0 0.10. So the alpha levels in hypothesis tests are always um, determined before you start the hypothesis test. And then what you're going to do on this one, and sorry, I was kind of mid-sentence and stumbled around there. So our alpha levels are determined beforehand because once you get your standardized test statistic and your p-value, you can't change your mind and say, oh, these aren't the results that I want. I'm going to change my alpha level. So this is decided upon before you start the test. Okay, the 1.87 is above the mean since it's positive. Remember, z positive z-scores are always to the right of the mean, and the mean would be zero in this case. 
And since it says right tail, we would shade to the right and our p-value would just represent the area that is shaded. Okay, so what we are looking for is we are looking for the probability that our z-score is greater than 1.87. Okay, and for this one, since we started shading at 1.87 and we don't stop shading, um, then we're going to go up to positive infinity. So when I enter this one, I'm going to enter it slightly different. Okay, so for this one, I'm going to do second distributions, normal CDF. My lower in this case would be the 1.87, and my upper would be the 1 second E99, which represents positive infinity. And then we would just hit paste, and we get 0 0.0307. Okay, so our p-value is 0 0.0307, and then remember our next step is to compare our p-value to our alpha level. So we would look at it 0 0.0307 is less than 0 0.10, and since it is less than, we go ahead and reject the null hypothesis. Okay, all right, so moving on to the next one. The next one is we have a two-tail test, and for this one, when you have a two-tail test, the standardized test statistic that they give you, you would label that in your videos, or in your drawing, in your model. So this would be 1.92, and then we would also shade the other tail, since it says two-tail, and this one starts at negative 1.92. So what what's going to happen in a two-tail test is that half of my p-value is in the right and half of my p-value is in the left tail. So that means that whichever one I'm given, I'm going to find the area that is more extreme than that and multiply it by two. So to find the answer to this one, we would do two times our p, the probability that z is greater than 1.92. Had they given you negative 1.92, then we would say two times the probability that z is less than negative 1.92. And the notation is you always go off of what you're given. As far as the area goes, they're the same in both tails, so it doesn't matter which one you use. Okay, so for this one, since it's the greater than 1.92, I'm going to go in and hit second distributions again, normal CDF. My lower in this case would be 1.92. And then we would still use the 1E99 because we're looking for the area to the right. And then we're going to take this answer and multiply it by 2. Okay, so we end up with 0 0.0548. Had I not multiplied, I'm just going to go up, and you can hit second enter into here um, as well. Had I not multiplied it by 2, my p-value is 0 0.0274. But since we need the area in both tails, that's why we multiplied it by 2. So our answer would be the 0.0549. Okay, so we get approximately 0 0.0549, and then we would compare our p-value to our alpha. So 0 0.0549 is greater than 0 0.05, so for this one, because it is sli slightly greater, we would fail to reject. Now, here is where I wanted to emphasize the importance of having the alpha level before you start because had we had the alpha level that we used in the last problem then we would have made a different re decision we would have rejected the null hypothesis so um, that's why you always make this decision before you start so that you don't try to manipulate the test into getting the results that you want it to all right so what i want you to do now is to pause the video try the two that i have listed out here once you have drawn out your model and found your p-values, then go ahead and resume watching the video and check to make sure that you got them correct. All right, now that you have had time to answer the question on your own, let's go ahead and draw out our picture and see what we have here. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and draw my model. Since it's a two-tailed test, that means I'm gonna shade both tails 
And then my z-score that this is starting at is 1.75, so down here it would be negative 1.75. Okay, when we set this up, we would say that this is two times the probability that z is greater than 1.75. And then we would go into our calculator. And you can do the two times first if you would like to. And then go into the normal CDF. Change this to 1.75. And then just go down and hit enter. And enter again. And we get 0 0.08. 0, 1. Okay, so 0 0.0801. Now what we're going to do is we're going to compare our p-value to our alpha level and we can see that it is greater than, so we would fail to reject h sub 0. Okay, um, for the last one, we're going to go ahead and draw out our model. The Z this time, because it's a right tail test, would be in the right tail. And we would say that it starts at 1.99. So because this is only one tail, we're going to be looking for the probability that Z is greater than 1.99. So we do not multiply it by 2 in this case. Okay, so we would just do 2 times. And if you wanted to, you can hit second and the enter button. And then you could just go over, instead of going back into the normal model, you can just come over and change um, the 1.75 to the 1.99 and hit enter, and it will give you the answer. Or you could have gone into the second distributions and done it that way as well. So for this, we end up with 0 0.0466. Oh, and don't do the mistake that I just did. I demonstrated what not to do. As soon as I got that answer, um, I forgot that on that last one, and that was a bad thing for me to show you. See, some of you are like, wait, that's not what I got. Um, but this is the importance of remembering when should I multiply by 2 and when should I not. So for this one, it would have been better for me to show you how to just go into the second normal CDF, change your lower to 1.99, and hit paste and enter. So we get 0 0.0234. So that is something that you wanna watch for is that if you just did a two tail test, make sure that you don't do what I just did. And it's sometimes good to model the mistakes that I often see. Um, that was an inadvertent mistake, but it is important to model that as well because it's good to learn from other people's mistakes. Okay, so we end up with approximately 0 0.0233, and then if we compare our p-value 0 0.0233 to our alpha of 0 0.10, we would end up rejecting the null hypothesis because it's outside of what we would want to happen. As always, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, please let me know. If there are additional topics you need me to cover, please let me know that as well.